How's it going everybody? Uh, Kramer back here with another video from Spooky Poker. And today I'm going to give you my absolute best strategy for improving at poker. And this is the best strategy for improving at anything in life in my opinion, but you know this is a poker channel so we're going to be talking about poker and you know this is the strategy I implemented to run my bankroll up from like $200 to like 10 grand or so um, in my first like year of playing poker live. Not a year, maybe my second year. But the point is, is that this is a very effective strategy and it's great for your mental health and it's great for improvement. And it's just like a better way to live your life. And it's almost contrarian to like, kind of what is preached these days about like hard work. So, um, you know, given that you may have figured out what I'm already gonna say, but um, you know, just to spill the beans to get it out there. Um, the idea is that instead of working and like grinding through poker and like, let's see, how do you even say it? So instead of like grinding through poker, you know, nose to the grindstone, just hammering away, playing all these tables, playing all these games, just like beat, beating yourself up and like, oh, you suck at this, you suck at this. Like you have to get better at like three bet pots. You have to like three bet more. You have to, that is not the way to improve. Um, could you improve like that? Yes. Could some people improve like that? Yes. But that is not how I improve my quickest and um, that's not what uh, you know. great coaches who I look up to have talked about. Let's say I make you do pull-ups and let's say the maximum amount of pull-ups you can do, the maximum amount of pull-ups is 10. Let's keep a nice round number. At 11, you couldn't do 11. If I put a point at a gun at you, you couldn't do 11. Should I make you do 10 pull-ups on our workout? No, I'm gonna make you do five. Why? Because I'm setting you up to work the next day. The next day we're gonna do five. And the next day we're gonna do another five. And then we're gonna do six. When six is really easy, we're gonna do seven. Why? If you count, if, the, if you did 10 pull-ups on Monday, you're gonna be sore till Thursday. Let's say it's really your max. So Thursday, you've only done 10 pull-ups. From Monday to Thursday, you've only done 10 pull-ups. Me, I've been doing five pull-ups every day. So I'm at 20 pull-ups already, 25 pull-ups. Mm. I have more volume than you. Uh. Now, if you add up at the end of the year, who trained more? I've trained way more than you. So let's say I go to jiu-jitsu practice. I'm doing jiu-jitsu every single day, three rounds, five days a week. That's 15 rounds. You go in twice a week, but you kill yourself. You do five rounds each day. You, kill, you push yourself those last two rounds and you burn yourself out. I still did 15, you're at 10. So the, this contrarian um, way of approaching things is basically you want to chase a flow state when you play. And the point of this is that you're going to be enjoying poker more and you're going to be improving more and you're going to be making like way more good decisions because you're going to be way more focused and like happy and energetic and you're going to be playing poker because you love playing poker, you know. Um, you know, most people get into it because they're like, okay, cool, a game that I can play and like make money and improve at, it's like, it's good in like all sorts of different dimensions, but... You know, it's somewhere along the line, especially when you're trying to improve, it's easy to transition from like this kind of like childlike nature of enjoying the game and improving at it into like this grind. And, you know, maybe there are times where you should grind. Like if you're professional and like the W Coop is coming around, then yeah, you should probably grind. But generally speaking, um, you're not gonna be making your best decisions when you are you know, nose to the grindstone, not happy, um, just playing because you have to, not playing because you want to or because, you know, whatever reason. So that's the point of this video is telling you that um, if you want to improve, what you should do is alter your approach and you should make it more learning oriented and enjoyment oriented. And by doing that, you will, you'll just improve faster, um, not only because you'll be more receptive to new information, in this different state of mind, but you'll also be able to play more often. So um, I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but when I was in school, um, one thing that I noticed was, let's say I have a test, like say today's Monday and I have a test on Friday. Um, one thing I noticed is that when I wanted to be very prepared for Friday, what I would do is study a little bit, like 30 minutes Monday, 30 minutes Tuesday, maybe an hour, 30 minutes again, Wednesday, and do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then by the time Friday comes, my I've just seen the information so many times, um, and I haven't like killed myself in the process that, um, you know, the information is very readily available in my brain, and I can like do very well on tests on Friday. 
And you compare that to something like cramming where it's like a lot of negative emotion and a lot of like stress and, um, you know, you're just trying to force things. And, um, you know, in, in my experience, that just doesn't work as well at all. And so with this strategy that I'm telling you to use, what you will do is um, play instead of trying to be like, oh, I need to play in all of, like, I don't know what you guys do, but like, for example, if there's a person out there that's trying to improve and they're like, oh, I need to spend all my time playing poker. Um, and they play, they work eight hours, play poker, six hours sleep. Um, you know, if they're not enjoying that, they're not going to improve. So what I recommend you guys do is you play for, you try, you try to maintain this like good frame of mind for like 30 minutes. Um, you know, I think anyone could probably do that. Um, you do that, you say like, how am I feeling? Am I making good decisions? Do I want to keep playing? And if the answer is yes, you can just keep playing indefinitely. You know, if you can, if you can maintain a flow state for like three hours or something, you're probably going to make money. You're probably going to play really well and just enjoy your time. But if you play for 30 minutes and say, okay, that I learned some things. I know what I did wrong. Um, I'm not really as engaged as I was cause I'm losing money and I'm a little sad about that. It's okay to just get off and you know, maybe, maybe come back in an hour or maybe just come back the next day. And so what I want to do is liken this to, um, what I spoke about in the beginning of this video, which is how I ran it up in the beginning of my poker career, which was, um, it's a very common strategy that people talk about, but like hit and run when you're, um, playing live, it's like, you just, you come up, um, you make some good decisions, you come up like a, a, a full buy-in or something and you just leave. Um, now I, I wouldn't say you want to make a habit of that, but definitely building this momentum of like making a, a habit of winning, uh, making a habit of like enjoying yourself playing poker. These are all like positive associations that are going to help you in the long run, as opposed to, again, this like grinding negative mentality, which I've certainly gone into, um, at one point in my life. Hey, um, so I'm actually editing the video right now, but I didn't touch on a point that I wanted to touch on more. So I'm just going to make this like quick interjection. So basically I've, I talked about a lot of concepts around improving, but, um, specifically around poker. One note that I didn't talk about that I wanted to was, um, how you actually improve at poker. So yes, consistency is key and not burning out is also key, but when it comes to actually improving at poker, what you want to do is you want to play your normal ABC game. And then at certain points, you're going to recognize new opportunities. And <clears throat> the way to improve at poker is by starting to take those opportunities when you see them and then reflecting on them, but not going crazy with them. So it's, it's kind of hard to imagine, but it's like, again, you're just, you, you play your ABC game and then what's going to happen is since you've seen so many hands, you're going to be like, okay, I've seen this spot before this type of player making this type of bet. I bet you, if I bet pot, if I, you know, raise him and bet big, he would fold right now. Um, so you, what you should do is you, you should implement those plays, um, and slowly, slowly add them to your repertoire in poker. And you know, that's, that's like different from saying, oh, I'm going to implement 10 new things today in poker. You can't do that because your brain just can't process that much new information at once. So what I want you guys, what I want you guys to do is to play again, play your ABC game until you see a moment where you're like, okay, I've studied this. I've studied this instance. I've studied this type of player. I know that I should try something new here or I tried this last time, I'm going to try this something new. And that's how you improve just these like slow improvements where you like, you clean up one part of your game at a time. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there. So now what I'm going to do is um, spell out this like concept in a few big principles and then um, elaborate on them a little bit. So the, the first big, there's going to be four. The first big principle is you don't want to burn yourself out. And so, of course, you know, I've been talking for the last five minutes about this concept, but the idea is you, you play and you, you make the tendency that you create a tendency to enjoy poker as opposed to like, let poker kind of like run your life and 
have like a lot of negative feelings about it. Um, so you don't want to burn yourself out by playing too much. And you know, um, what I recommend is, you know, you just, you play like 30 minutes today, 30 minutes tomorrow, and you kind of build up, you kind of build up momentum to where you can actually handle these longer sessions. But the idea is that you just don't burn yourself out by, um, overwhelming yourself and playing when you're not, um, enjoying it or there's no opportunity. There's no real reason to like keep playing. So number two, uh, this is, this is related of course, is enjoy the process. So again, the, the idea of this like kind of flow oriented, um, state of mind is that you want to enjoy the process. Now that doesn't mean you're going to win all the time. Nobody wins in poker all the time. Um, but you should be able to look at hands and say like, okay, I understand why I lost or, okay, you know, I got it in good or there was no getting away from that. It was a, it was a flip and I just lost, you know, those things are all reasonable ways to lose. But, um, if you're not enjoying the process, you're probably going to be making a lot of like stupid plays, stupid calls, um, stupid, like three barrels and stuff like that. So the next principle is consistency is key. So, um, I was, I was definitely hammering on this earlier, um, talking about the test, right? So if I, if you have a test on Friday, you don't want to cram on Thursday. You want to be studying a little bit every day and kind of like you, you push your boundaries just a little bit every day. And by Friday, you'll probably be good to go. So instead of having a test on Friday, imagine that you, your end goal for poker is like three years down the line. So you just aim to improve a little bit every single day, you know, you're going to enjoy the process a lot more. And you're also going to, um, because of consistency, you're going to keep getting a lot better. And, um, you know, this all play, this all ties into one another because, um, when you aren't burned out, you can be consistent. And when you can be consistent, you're not going to take these big breaks where you just hate poker and you're like, why do I play this game? And like all these things. So, um, for that reason, consistency is key. Consistency will keep you getting better. And this is my last tip, which is, um, one that, uh, is like very special to me. Uh, it, it hits home with me because, um, I've found myself doing this so much and I look back at all the time I've wasted and money I've wasted too by um, kind of giving into this mindset. So the last one is don't fall into the masochistic mindset of like, wow, I just run so bad. I'm so unlucky. Like, woe is me. Like, the poker gods hate me. All, all of these things. Now, look. Sometimes you really do run that bad. Sometimes you run bad for weeks. Um, like, just for an example, like all of last year when I played live poker, I would get it in good. But I, like, for like two weeks, I got it in good in these massive like twelve hundred dollar pots, and I would just lose all of them, and I just got crushed last year. <laughs> but the the point is, is that it wasn't like this mass. I I just like got up and left the table, and I wasn't like angry, and I didn't rebuy and just like oh I hate I hate this game, and I'm just like because we're all susceptible to that. We especially if you're new, you can really easily fall into that masochistic mindset, and I really want you guys to remember not to fall into that. So um, those are the four main principles, and then the last thing I wanted to say is um, I I don't I have no clue where to find this. Um, interview, but I remember Phil Ivey in an interv interview once said um, regarding his online poker like strategy, he said if he loses a massive pot, even if he just started, he might just log off right away. And I want you guys to think about that. If one, you know, debatably the greatest poker player of all time, if his strat, if he's willing to implement this strategy of just getting off right away, what does that say about someone who? grinds through negative emotion and just like tries to like fight with themselves and get themselves to book a win. What does that say? The best poker player in the world is willing to get off if he's feeling like it's a bad idea to keep playing. But some, some people think they're better than that. And um, I'm here to tell you that it's just easier not to work like to uh, work that way. So um, that is the video. I know that this one is less like poker like tactics but i promise you this this is like the best advice i could ever give anyone about improving at stuff um you know i've gotten 
I don't know. I, this isn't about me like bragging or anything, but like you know, I've gotten like really buff before. I've gotten really good at poker before. I've gotten really good at chess before, and this is like the consistent thing. It's just like you want to be consistent and you don't want to burn out and you want to go for flow state. So uh, I will leave it there. Um, I hope you have enjoyed learning about this topic. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Also. At, you know, at the moment of recording this video, which is um, July 11th, I am taking applications for like free lessons because um, I'm considering selling lessons and I want to get some, give some free lessons out and see if people actually like them, if I'm a good coach. So if you're interested in um, getting better at poker, um, you can just email me. I'll leave my email down below. But also uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about like another video you want me to make. And lastly, smash the like button and you'll be rewarded with three hours of run good, I promise. So that's my, that's my new call to action for, uh, for liking the video, but uh, that's gonna do it. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.